Okay, so now we're going to look at sketching curves in polar coordinates. In the last video, we looked at the polar coordinate system and how to plot points in this system. And now we're going to look at how to plot collections of points, which are going to form curves. What would be a collection of points? Well, if we consider an equation, something like r equals f of theta, and we ask for what are all the points that satisfy that equation? What are all the, all the r and theta values that satisfy that equation? That'll construct a curve. And we're interested in trying to plot these things now. So here's some examples of some curves. r equals sine 3 theta. It's got this sort of three leaf flowered kind of structure, 2 sine theta, you got this 4 leaf one, 5 sine theta, or sine 5 theta. It's got this 5 leaf one. There's a 1 plus cos theta. It's called a cardioid because it kind of looks like a heart. At least if you turn your head sideways, it'll look like a heart. Um, different variations on that. All of these ones may not look like it right now, but all of these ones we'll be able to plot by hand. We'll be able to look at this equation and be able to construct the plot by hand. That's really cool. Um, we'll also, I'll show you how to plot these things using graphing utilities as well. Um, GeoGebra, for example, I'll show you how to do this in GeoGebra. Um, some of these things, though, I just want to point out some characteristics. Before we go into the full-blown sketching of these things, let's just look at a few characteristics of this. Um, let's just pick this middle one, r equals sine 2 theta. Let's look at this point out here. What's that distance? How can we figure that out? Well, you got to start to switch the way you think about distances now in polar coordinates. Distance is the r value. What's so special about this point way out here? Well, it looks like it's got the biggest r value. The point pulls away. Out of all those points on this leaf, it's the one that's the r value is the biggest. Out of all the points on this leaf, it looks like this very tip is the one where the r value is the biggest. So I look at my r uh, value. It's given by sine of 2 theta. When is sine of 2 theta the biggest? Well, first of all, sine is biggest when its value is 1. So that immediately tells me that that distance has to be 1. Moreover, when does sine of an angle become 1? Well, when first, first it happens when the angle is pi by 2. So let me just think about this. When sine, when the angle, the thing I'm putting into the sine function is pi by 2, sine of it will be 1. So when is 2 theta equal to pi by 2? Oh, well that's when theta is pi by 4. Oh, so I know that that's got to be pi by 4 then. Because if I plug pi by 4 into this expression, I get sine of pi by 2, which is 1. So I get that. And so I can start to immediately pick off other things here. That angle would be 3 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4. This angle down here, it would be negative pi by 4. So I can start to pick off all of these properties. Again, for these ones, what's the biggest distance here out to that tip? Well, that would be the maximum value of sine. That, again, would be 1. How about for this one here? Well, this is kind of cool because we've sort of got two different leaves. And we're going to see that we can actually sketch this one by hand. And that's kind of interesting in and of itself. But what would the biggest value be out here? Well, let's think about it. I want this thing to be biggest as possible. I'm taking 1 minus something. Well, if the cosine was negative 1, that's as small as it could possibly get in terms of the negative values, then this would be negative 1 times negative 2. So that's positive 2 plus 1 is 3. So the biggest this thing can get is a value of 3. So that's what that distance has to be here. That has to be a value of 3. What about this short little distance here? How does that happen? Well, I would take 1 minus, well, if cosine was negative 1, then, or sorry, if cosine was 1, then you'd have something like 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Hmm, maybe that point there is coming from something out here, but the r value is negative, so it slingshots me to the other side. Maybe that's what it is. So that's an r value of 1. So, so we can pick some of these features off just by looking at the corresponding equation, but thinking of now r is distance and theta is this rotational angle.
Okay? So I just wanted to give you a bit of a, a, a starter on how you should get your, your sort of mind in place for looking at these things. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and start sketching graphs, working our way up to things like this. So what curve is represented by the polar equation r equals 3? Got our polar coordinate, well, our, our, our plane here, and I'm using the Cartesian coordinate grid um, or axes to, as a frame of reference for my polar coordinate system. What is r equals 3? Well, those are all the points whose r value is 3, all the points whose distance is 3 from the pole. So there's a whole circle of points whose distance is 3 from the pole. That's r equals 3. Ah, we're starting to see, with this example, what is interesting about the polar coordinate system. If you think about the Cartesian coordinate system and an equation like y equals 3 or x equals 3, those give you straight lines. y equals 3 would be a horizontal line. x equals 3 would be a vertical line. Those are essentially the sides of rectangles that we have in that system, hence the name the rectangular coordinate system. In this system, if we take one of the variables and set it constant, like r equals 3, then we get circles. So in some sense, circles are the basic objects in this coordinate system. And that's what this coordinate system is useful for. It's for representing things that are sort of circling or spiraling around the pole. Okay, so for that matter, I mean, why don't we just go with the next one? What curve, what is the curve given by this equation? Theta equals 3. Theta equals 3. What is the curve given by that? Actually, I'm going to change it from 3 to maybe an angle that we might be more used to working with. Theta equals pi by 4. What is this? Theta equals pi by 4. Well, we want all the points r theta where the theta value is pi by 4. So these are all the points whose r value is positive. That's pi by 4 there. But we could also have points like negative 1 pi by 4 or negative 2 pi by 4. So we could have all of those negative r values appearing as well. And so there is our curve, theta equals pi by 4. So the basic objects in this coordinate system are when r is constant, it's a circle. When theta is constant, it's a straight line through the origin. So lines through the origin and circles are the basic objects in the Cartesian coordinate system. Just for fun, I mean, this wasn't asked in this question, but you know, one of the most basic objects you do in the Cartesian coordinate system afterwards, is, after looking at y equals a constant or x equals a constant, is to say, well, what about y equals x? What does that look like? Of course, that's a straight line through the origin of slope 1. What about in this system? What is something of the form r equals theta? Well, let's think about that. What would r equals theta look like? So I'm going to imagine theta moving. So when I'm on the polar axis, my theta value is 0. So my r value is 0. So I'm right at the pole. And then as theta starts to increase, as my angle starts to increase, my r value starts to get bigger. So it starts to spiral out like this. And then when I hit this point, my theta value is pi by 2, but so is my r value. And then my theta value starts to increase, but so does my r value. Because as theta increases, so does my r value. And as theta increases, my r value keeps increasing, and so on. And so what's happening is this equation, r equals theta, is a spiral. Something spiraling away from the pole as the theta values increase. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Another basic object. So basic objects are circles, lines, spirals, things that are circling around the origin, but we also get these straight lines through the origin as well based on theta being constant. So let's now look at a few more examples of curve sketching. 